I don't think it makes any sense to punish those who, who came early and for the sake of those who are coming late. So let's, let's go ahead and drop. My name is Dr. Fimelek. I'm an associate professor of management. I've been studying Wikipedia for quite a while. And this presentation is about collaboration or conflict, whether our movement is more collaboration or conflict -driven. Uh, and I wanted to start with a short introduction of what Wikipedia is. Uh, you might have heard about it, uh, uh, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm putting it up not because it's something you might not know, but because of showing you what my focus is. For me, the largest social movement on earth. This is how I perceive Wikipedia. It's, it's, not, a, it's not an encyclopedia. It's, it's a social movement. It's tremendous. The largest collaborative effort of humankind, actually, ever in history. And what I really find interesting as well is that of course, we have this large encyclopedia. It's 4 million articles on English Wikipedia only. Uh, but it's almost 30 million pages which are not articles. Of course, these are red regs, these are uh, categories. But still, the vast majority is discussions. So think about it. There are much more discussions on Wikipedia than articles. Wikipedia is 50 times more than Britannica in terms of, of word count. But the article amount is just a fraction of what we do in discussions. In unimaginable. So when you think about it, it loads of lengthy discussions, some of them even take hundreds of thousands of words. So one discussion, so one single discussion could be longer than my book. Uh, and Wikipedia is very often described as a virtual open collaboration effort. And this is something I want to challenge a little bit. I don't think it's a collaborative project. I don't think it's collaboration driven. I think it's driven by conflict, by disagreement, and basically by, by the fact that somebody's wrong on the internet. Uh, my research, I don't want to go into, into details. My research is ethnographic. I've been doing it over the last uh, seven years. Uh, I've been in different roles, an admin, a bureaucrat, a steward. So I, I've had different angles in, in the community. And the results are forthcoming early in 2014 in the book uh, by Stanford University Press. Uh, I don't really want to take this commercial break to encourage you to have a look at it once it's out. Uh, and about the presentation itself, I want to focus on the most epic conflict ever in the history of Wikipedia, which, as you definitely know, would be the Danzig Gdańsk debate. Uh, so basically, uh, these two together, the article about the Polish city, currently Polish city, Gdańsk, should be uh, placed under the name of Danzig, which is the German name or the former name, or well, I don't know what to take sides, uh, or whether it should be under Gdansk or Gdańsk. Uh, Gdańsk was among the first 10,000 articles on Wikipedia, so it was a, a very early article. In May 2001, it was already a proper article, and I've, I've dug into the ar archives, which are not originally stored on the Wikipedia websites, to, to see how it looked in the very beginning. There was a retrieved uh, repository of original files. And as some people say, it is the largest editor of Wikipedia of all times. I'm not sure if there's any other. If you know of any larger conflict, please do let me know. I've been looking for something uh, comparable. Also considered the lamest conflict of all time. Uh, it lasted for several years, mostly 2001, 2005. But even now, if you have a look at the article, every now and then there will be a little flame war, you know, a bit of editing, reverts, uh, exactly about this issue. Should it be Gdańsk or should it be Dante? Uh, over 400,000 words of discussion in this period, which is roughly four times longer than my book. Uh, 4,500 edits uh, between 2001 and 2012, which as, as, as you can see is more than one edit per day. Basically, every day somebody edits a nice article. And the, of course, the, the edit war went, as you all know, uh, <laughs> Everybody has to invoke Nazis at some point, right? The, the, we, know, we all know the law, uh, the law of Nazi analogies. So, of course, in this particular context, of course, it was not that clear because Nazis were part of the city's history. So, I'm not sure if, he, if uh, the Michael Snow's uh, law applies fully. But, of course, uh, there were very different uh, flames from Nazis to more reasonable arguments to say that what was known as Danzig is historically the conflict sounds very much like unknown to Soviet era propaganda. Yeah, Soviets, Nazis, uh, no Mayo, Chairman Mayo was not involved, but, but pretty much all the all the big guys. 
Uh, and the whole conflict was the origin of the three reverts rule. I don't know if you know that. Exactly because of this particular conflict, the three RR rule was created, because of one particular user, actually. And the three reverts rule is not existing on many Wikipedias, probably because they didn't have this particular debate. Uh, the conflict was going very, very slowly. Uh, well, slowly is not a very good word, because edits were taking place every day, but the positions were rearranging very slowly. At some point, people were, in my view, losing touch with the reason, totally. They were even going to such minute details, like deciding whether it could be called Gdańsk formally Danzig, Gdańsk German Danzig, Gdańsk formally also Danzig, Gdańsk in English formally known as Danzig. All those four were considered totally unacceptable. Absolutely not, because you know, if you say it's Gdańsk formally Danzig, it would assume that formerly Danzig was the only name, and Gdańsk wasn't. If you say Gdańsk German Danzig, it will assume it's not Danzig in English. If you say Gdańsk formerly also Danzig, then again, it's a slap in the face of those who say that Gdańsk was the only proper 1,000 year old name, and so on and so on. Eventually, they were even disputing whether this little sign over, over N, like, like this title over N, uh, signifies in, in English speaking press that the journalists actually assume that in English it should be used with the, with the title, or maybe it's just a typographic thing, like the newspapers are being uh, types in a certain way, so even those tiny minute details were a bone of contention. Many attempts of, of, of resolving the issue, I don't want to go into too many details of course, Jimbo got involved, many admins got involved, nothing really helped. On the list, every now and then there was a huge flame war as well, uh, it spreads to different wikis, because you know, technically if you, if you can say, yeah, on German wiki, on Polish wiki, on uh, French wiki, it is Danzig, it gives you some leverage on English wiki. So both sides were trying to you know, spread this war into other Wikipedias. Uh, board members got involved, didn't help. Uh, eventually, the unengaged users quit, obviously, because my view is that conflicts on wiki provoke to edit, so you're sort of tempted to enter the war. But the more you do, the more others who are not engaged are not really persuaded to participate. It's, it's only natural. It's this so-called so, so, so escalation of commitment. People got committed, but those who are not in the game are less committed. But of course, in most contexts on Wikipedia which persist, there will be a number of editors on both sides, and they, both sides are committed, and it's extremely difficult to resolve it then. Uh, however, what, is, what I found interesting was that sides were making concessions to the other side. For example, uh, similar to this Christmas truce of 1916, where, where the British soldiers and the German soldiers, well, for the French soldiers and the German soldiers, were celebrating Christmas, and then they regained, uh, went back to shooting each other. Uh, every now and then, each side made a concession when somebody from the outside was trying to intervene. So there was some sort of, not really written down, but some sort of understanding agreement of what are we not talking about. So even the conflict had a sort of team dynamics. The forever war was only, in my, well, only resulted in eliminating, weeding out the most rabid participants, the, the hardcore uh, participant states. And since there were no clear sources how to resolve it, the dispute continued, because sources said both, both ways. And in my experience, I don't know about yours, it is, again, very typical. Very typically, you will not really have just one ultimate source. If you have, there's no conflict, because there's an ultimate source. If the conflict persists, usually, you know, it's not really that easy to resolve. And keep in mind, the Gdańsk Danzig issue is not something we can describe, we can resolve by just describing there is a conflict. Because there is an article, one will be the name of the article, the, one, the other one will be a redirect. So it's a zero-one game. Eventually, one will have to stay. All attempts at consensus were contested. Uh, the excuse for some have covered that. But what I think is really fascinating is that this conflict was eventually resolved by breaking the rules. On Wikipedia, we say that voting is evil, that we should not really resolve to voting. But this particular conflict did. Uh, actually, it was a very simple mechanistic ballot. Who is for this? Who is for that? The tough uh, number result uh, 
became the solution. Interestingly also, some of the voting, in my view currently, some of the votes were discarded as not valid, and they shouldn't be. But people were just too tired to even bother. There was a voting, there was a solution, and this solution lasts for seven years. Some arbitrary guys seven years ago had a voting, and this lasts, because you know, the conflict has such a power, nobody wants to enter back the same huge dispute. So what are the, uh, what is the larger picture? Many similar conflicts appear on Wikipedia. It's not just one Danzig, Danzig. Ivory Coast or Cote de Vigier, or whatever it's pronounced. Kiev or Kiev, Ganges or Ganga. This actually, is, this one is crazy. Because with these, you can say there is a traditional English user, right? There are English native, native speakers of English who use one particular name and it's fine. But with Gandhis or Ganga, both are native English speakers. Just as it happens, some are from India, some are from the United States. For users from India, using the word Ganges might have this post-colonial thing, it's actually a slap in the face. Nevertheless, since there are more Americans and more, more, more uh, Western English speakers on, on Wikipedia, the Indian point of view uh, does not stand a chance, I, I think it's a pity, but there are even more, more mundane issues. Yogurt or yogurt? How should you spell this? A lengthy debate. <laughs> okay, thank you for your input. Uh, but there was a very long debate how it should be. There were a number of reverts, a number of edit words. You can have a look at the history. Even craziest, crazier topics are a bone of contention. Does Mexico actually have a legal language, an official language? Come on, how difficult should it be to find out? Apparently it is. So my conclusions are, uh, we have this consensus-oriented designs and there are currently a fad in organization studies. In management, people would say, yeah, consensus-oriented designs are great. Uh, but they have many side effects. For example, the time that it takes to reach a decision is much longer. Uh, moreover, the so-called so so -called democratic hierarchy, so designs last like hours without a boss, without a hierarchy. Uh, rely on expressing dissent. You're actually expected to say you disagree if you disagree. If you don't, dis if, if you don't express your disagreement, it means that you agree. <coughs> it even perpetuates the, the conflict. Also, the culture of negating, this, this culture of forcing you to, to disagree, uh, leads to the fact that if we negate leadership need, it only delegitimizes natural leaders. Because in all groups we have people who have more to say, who are more respected, but if we all say we don't need leaders and we repeat it all the time, those people will not be listened. Finally, Wikipedia relies on autocracy and it's incomplete by design. It means that, of course, we have to create more rules, but we will never agree that the rules are complete. Uh, and the final table that I want to show you the, the typology tra of trajectories of conflicts uh, after I've, I've analyzed quite a number of them. I think the main difference is when we have a look at the commitment levels of participants and whether the conflict is confrontational or non-confrontational. In the case of unequal commitment levels and a confrontational conflict, uh, the side which has a lower commitment level will usually quit. Or if these are inexperienced editors, the one who has more commitment will get blocked because they will start insulting people. In the case of confrontational conflict which have equal commitment levels, we have a stalemate, just like in the Danzig case. Unless, of course, again, inexperienced editors might start uh, insulting each other, but as long as we, as they understand rules, they will stay in their positions. Uh, unequal commitment levels and non-confrontational situation would be a domination scenario. For example, if you throw uh, rules at somebody, somebody disagrees with you, so you edit five times a day, you give them, read this, read that, here's a source, here's another source. This will be your commitment, your commitment is high, you're engaged. It's not really confrontational, but you will win by throwing too much information at them. And finally, equal commitment levels and non-confrontational approach, it will be collaborative, the one that is typically attributed to Wikipedia as the standard mode. My view is that we have a problem with the stalemate scenario. Uh, there, we do not really have ways to deal with that. And the problem is that uh, other organizations which use similar designs have resolved this. For example, Sue quite often refers to Quaker community. Uh, I also analyzed the so-called search conferences communities 
which rely on collaborative designs. In both these cases, there is a role of a facilitator of a conflict. And a facilitator is somebody not, who is not only really an arbiter or a mediator, but somebody who just simply helps to facilitate arguments, uh, listens to both sides, has a technical role of listing <coughs> arguments. And if we could have somebody like that, maybe this tailwind scenario would no, not go the way it typically goes now. And I'm open to questions or comments. For starters, I think the abortion situation and the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict are totally different kinds of conflicts. With abortion, I think it, I would assume it's easier to just describe the conflict as this. For example, to say some people call it pro-life, some people call it pro-choice, and to refer to the conflict itself. But with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it's not it's not so simple because it has to be a little bit. Yeah, with, with the titles, it's all, always a zero-one game. That, that's true. Uh, even even worse kind of scenarios when there are cultural differences, like with the legal legal rape article. Legal rape article was originally a description of an incident from American uh, politics, where where one politician said that if a female gets raped and if it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body will have a way to shut it down. Uh, and again, I understand how this incident uh, may be uh, encyclopedic, but there was a legitimate uh, concern from editors from outside of the US that legitimate rape maybe should be an article about, for example, the medieval uh, ritual of, of the knight or the prince to have the, the, the right of the first knight. And the concern was that one incident from American politics is probably not worth a separate article in place of this particular uh, historic uh, thing. But in, in all those cases when the namespace is involved, I think it, it is very tough. And as I said, um, for me, the, the, the way I look for inspirations from other democratic heritage designs, ultimate difference would be in facilitation. If there was an assigned facilitator for that conveying the discussion once the conflict enters the stalemate phase. Because of course we do not need facilitators all the time. But once the conflict lasts, well, I don't know, some amount of words or some amount of time, then a facilitator would be definitely helping. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, I was wondering, you're talking about the role of facilitator. And um, I'm seeing a lot of analogies, if not a direct one-to-one -one correspondence, with what the mediator committee, the mediation committee on the English Wikipedia, at least, has tried to do, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that limited success is the best way to describe it. Um, most parties don't want mediation uh, because they're convinced they're obviously in the right, and even when there is a mediator involved, um, as soon as you get uncompromising <coughs> positions on one side or the other, mediation necessarily fails. How do you see a way to make this work? Why well, didn't the mediation committee work since they were facilitators? Two differences. I have some, uh, I'd love to talk to you about that later. Okay. Two major differences that come to my mind immediately. Uh, mediation is voluntary, always. Uh, facilitation doesn't have to be. It could be like part of the process. 
Second of all, mediation is mostly about uh, pacifying and sort of soothing the conflict rather than about reaching a meritocratic outcome. Mediation is not really about deciding what the right outcome should be. Mediation is about resolving the, co the conflict between people. So these, these are the major differences, but I agree, of course, there are differences to other forms of dispute resolution, including even arbitration. A mediation could be formal, could be informal, you know, all, all shades of green, but facilitation per se is a form in which there has to be a facilitator once their conflict reaches a certain phase, and the facilitator is interested mainly at sorting arguments out, for example. So there could be like templates, yeah, here we sort arguments pro, here we sort arguments against, and the facilitator would be in charge of that. So it seems to me that this is sort of almost actually a technical problem because the problem is that the page type has to be unique and therefore can only have one determination or have only one form. In Wikidata, that's sort of a bit more neutral because everything is just a number. But even in that case, you have to only have one label. So that sort of dancing would have to be expressed in that singular label, even though you would have also known as. I was wondering if you would be if you would think it would be some sort of solution where you could have things numerically indexed and then have non-ordered labels so the orders would be, because you could have two labels but they would be displayed in a random order whenever they were viewed so that none of them would be prepared. Do you think there could be technical solutions? Well, first of all, I don't think anybody would be satisfied with random order in many cases. Uh, second of all, I think while it would work for Gdansk and Nazis, it wouldn't work for legal rape for the matter. Right. Uh, so many situations in which it wouldn't. But I agree, of course, when it's just about a priority, which should be the rhetoric, which should be the main article, it could help. But I don't think it's the, the, the major part of the conflict. Um, sorry, I think we've only got time for one more um, question. Yeah, trends. Uh, I control articles for deletion, and my impression there is that the trend is people are just losing interest in conflicts. People say, should you delete this? Nobody cares. Do you, do you observe any global trends? Conflict is going up, down, or? Well, it, again, I do not do a quantitative analysis of this sort across wikis. My experience is that on English Wikipedia specifically, people are, are largely uninterested because there's just too much to comment on. On Polish Wikipedia, for the matter, people do comment about deletion. So it's not, I think it's a matter of size and of, of the atomization of editors. Uh, but I agree that this is a problem. I mean, if, if people nominate for deletion, nobody comments, nobody cares, uh, the, the system's flawed. Right, so thank you very much. I think we'll have to stop here. And round of applause for this.